Umesh, I'm just going live. Yeah, sure. Yeah, Umesh, you can start. Okay, a very good evening for all the students. So uh, let me just give you the format of your today's uh, presentation. Of course, the presentation will be done and some of the participants will also be attending live and uh, on YouTube. So how do you ask your questions? So I'm gonna copy paste a link. Please fill that form so that I can receive these questions. All right, and uh, please don't your, ask your questions on the Zoom chat or on the uh, YouTube live because it is very difficult to follow here and there. So if you have any questions, please ask them by filling the form so that I can review it in a more methodical manner. Okay, that's number one. Now this uh, link is also in the description block of the YouTube uh, video that you are watching. Okay, so you can find this link. Now, second point is uh, we had actually organized a few other uh, sessions in the past and they are quite useful and powerful as well. So those links are also added in the description of the YouTube uh, box. I recommend all of you to kindly go through those, um, those videos. It has a lot of interesting information, very detailedly explained about portfolio preparation and about interview preparation as well. Okay. So today, in today's session, I'm going to give a, a high level overview and also basically uh, answer some most commonly asked questions such that you can uh, understand, relate to, and uh, you will have a, a nice structure and understanding of what is expected. Okay, so uh, let me share my screen. <clears throat> All right. So there are three areas that we are going to discuss today. One is portfolio, the statement of purpose, and interview preparation. Okay, so uh, in these three areas, I'll be talking about five points. So what is that about? How to get started? How to, what to include in that respective element? How to present? And how did you can help you? Okay. All right. Uh, so let us start off with the portfolio. Now, um, so there are there are two kinds of portfolios. Okay. Uh, let us consider it as the Indian portfolio and the abroad portfolio. Okay. Uh, the Indian portfolio is much more simpler and straightforward okay whereas the abroad portfolio is a bit more complex and it requires more attention because the college is uh, the college will give you special requirements in terms of how to prepare your portfolio they'll also give you some projects that you need to do but when it is uh, for the indian portfolio it is pretty much straightforward okay so what is this portfolio? The portfolio would contain about 10 to 15 pages of your creative work. Okay. And uh, I often come across students who have lots of works, all right? And um, they will also have a sketchbook. And when they come for guidance they come up with all these different works that they have done 
and uh, they are confused which work to keep, which work to keep. Right. So um, the first thing what you have to understand is your portfolio should have 10 to 15 pages of creative work. Okay, so each page might have multiple works. Okay, but it should not be exceeding more than 10 to 15. If you're not able to select and condense your work into 15 pages, then you do not know what is good work, what is bad work, and you do not have the control of your work. Okay, so that's number one. Secondly, whatever work that you include should be of high quality, the best of your work. Okay, so you cannot include any mediocre work because you are creating creating an impression of who you are in terms of your capacities, your abilities, and etc. Showing these ten to fifteen pages, so you have to include high quality work, and that work should also include variety. Let us say ten to fifteen pages of only portraits makes no sense, okay? Or ten to fifteen pages of photography makes no sense. So it has to have a good healthy mix of variety of work. So we are talking about art, craft, sculpture, different mediums, using different mediums, paintings, digital paintings, all right? Or uh, if you had come up with some graphic novels or storyboarding, okay? Or if you have done any posters or logo designs, Okay, so you need to have a mix of all of these, including photography, if you've done any animations, etc. All right. And please also include discipline specific work as well, especially for Indian portfolios. If you're looking at, say, 10 to 15 pages, at least have three, four pages dedicated to design discipline specific work. Let us say you're, you're interested in uh, going for there is a product design, okay? Have some ideas or your sketches related to product design. Because the purpose of this portfolio is to number see that, okay, you're generally interested, you're a creative person, you have some skills. And also to show that you know what discipline that you're applying for, okay? So when you work, when you add some works into that space, it shows that, okay, you know which field you're entering in. So um, a small tip, as I told you, there is a DQ video in the description block of this YouTube uh, channel, right? Or the YouTube video. Please watch them thoroughly. It will tell you in detail which, where I have also shown a lot of examples in terms of what kind of works and how many works you have to be including if it is an Indian portfolio and if it is an abroad portfolio. Okay, fine. Now, how to get started? Where do you start? So, most probably you all would have been doing some kind of a creative work. It could be some doodles or whatever creative work that you have been doing. The first step is to scan all your work scan or take photographs. Nowadays, the mobile phones are pretty powerful, pretty neat, all right? So you can also uh, take a simple photograph of your work and compile them neatly using a software. You don't have to actually use so, softwares like Photoshop, Adobe Illustrator or InDesign, etc., etc. Nowadays, what is happening is the technology has improved and you have better applications. Uh, one of my favorite applications at this point of time is Canva. Okay. I use Canva for any simple compilation works and etc. That's that is enough. Even if in fact, if you have a paid version, you can also clean up the work, whatever you have, you can make the background transparent and all of that, increase the brightness, intensity of color, and etc. etc. You can do very easily. So you don't need to break your head using Photoshop, Illustrator and all. Just 
simple compilation. Uh, you, you just create an A3 size uh, presentation in Canva and you can start adding all your work into that. Okay, and clean them up. Now, some of you would say, sir, I don't have any work. I only have DQ work. I not done any work in the past. So what should I do? So if you do not have any work, then start doing it. It is very important that you do. All right. So um, now the question is, okay, what should I do, sir? What should I draw? Okay, you draw anything. One of the favorite topics of all design schools is observation sketches. Observation sketches is that you sit in front of an environment or an object or a person and you sketch them live. Okay, you sketch them, you color them, you show variations of it. All right, so that is one of the favorite topics for most of the design schools. They would like to see that. Okay, so you can start with observation sketches. And uh, I have also come across some students who would say that, sir, I have been working. Not all foundations for oil based. So I would like to add all the work. So all the work from grade two to grade 10, 11, they would want to add the work. Please don't do that. The, the reviewers are more interested in your recent work, which is like last one or two years of work. Don't go beyond that. You may be a great artist, prodigy, etc., but that has to be shown in your recent work. All right. Okay. So I hope uh, how to get started is clear. Now, what to include? Okay. So this is uh, very interesting. So your portfolio should have three components. Okay. One is about you, who you are, your hobbies, and etc. Cetera, et cetera. Okay. So we generally call it as a me board because. It, you're talking about yourself and you keep that creative and visually uh, interesting. So the other word for me board is visual resume. So if you just type in uh, Google for visual resume, you'll find very interesting compositions, templates, etc. You take inspiration from them, but don't use any templates. You create your own me board. Okay, that's number one. Number two, 80% of your hobby work, as it already uh, said, it has to be a combination of all your work, not just one category of work. Let us say you are really good in uh, doing your uh, painting, landscapes, you do landscapes. So your, your portfolio should not have only landscapes, it should have a variety of work. Okay? And then 20% of discipline specific work is what you include. Um, very important, ideally, every piece of work that you are doing has to be your original work. That means that you should have created that work. If you are including any replication work, please mention it. Or if you have a combination of original and replication work, you segregate them. I have all the replication work on one slide and say that, okay, replication, I have done this for practice. I'm seeing some photographs and you have drawn this. But don't mix up your replication work with the original work. That is uh, that's that is not good. It not give it not give a good feeling or opinion or uh, an impression for the person who is reviewing your work. All right, and as much as possible, only use the original work. Okay. Now, how to present? So. Let us say if you have a uh, physical work, like you have your sketchbooks and you have paintings and whatever hand handcrafted work and etc. So, you know, the question is, okay, would you carry all of this with you to, to the school that you're going? Okay. So you can carry all of that, but please understand that you will be visiting at least five different schools for as part of your interview process admission and all that. So first of all, you have to safeguard all your work. Okay. 
because these are very unique works. If you lose all your work, then you lost everything. Okay, so you, you cannot afford to lose your work. So ideally, what I suggest is please document all your work nicely. Compile them digitally. Document these. If you, let's say if you have done a three D model, take nice photographs of yeah. that and compile it digitally in an A three size sheet. Okay. Um, so it's very important that you, when you are designing your Canva itself, you take the dimensions of A3 size and then you set that, okay? And then start compiling the work because you can just uh, save as PDF and send the PDF to the printer and get two copies of A3 print nicely bounded. Okay, so you'll have two nicely bounded portfolios with you. Carry these two along with it also carry original work as well. So whatever, let us say, a student has done some miniature clay models. So you can neatly take them in a box and you can show them. But let us say you, if somebody has created a three feet high, some kind of installation, you will not be able to take them. So take some nice pictures and compile them. Wherever you can take your original work, you take it along with the digitally compiled uh, portfolios printed portfolios, okay? So the idea is that you present the portfolio, the digitally printed one to the panel and uh, they go through it. And if they are interested in the talking about a particular piece of work for more time, then you can say, hey, I have the original, so you can show that. Or maybe they may, maybe they may ask, okay, show me the original work. So then, then you can show the original work. So that way you safeguard your original works. And at the same time, uh, since you have two copies and let us say there are two people on the panel, so they can finally review that work. And if you're having videos or animations, you now that can be shown on an electronic device. So you can take your phone, mobile phone or an iPad or a laptop and you can show it on the digital device. Now the problem with the digital device is anything with the technology, it will fail at the right moment. When it is necessary, it will fail. So please carry one copy in your phone, one copy in your, on your laptop or an iPad, whatever. Have backup always. Okay, fine. Now, how DQ can help you? Yes, uh, if you are a DQ student, then you can get your portfolio reviewed by DQ faculty during the round two sessions. Now in the round two sessions, of course, you will be doing material handling or various other activities. But once the briefing is done, the work has been given, the faculty are available and you can raise your hand and take their attention, get their attention and show your work and get the reviews of your work. Okay, This is for the Indian portfolios. But if you're preparing for an abroad portfolio, we have special classes for abroad portfolio on Tuesdays, evening 4.30 to 7, uh, 4.30 to 6.30. Now those are the special classes. Okay, uh, in fact, uh, abroad portfolio is a separate coursework altogether. Okay, because abroad portfolio requires more effort, more thought process, more planning. And uh, each of the design school, abroad design schools, they give a specific task and those have to be nicely planned and guided for the students such that they can be working on it. Okay, so for abroad portfolios, this, uh, the review and the guidance will happen on Tuesdays, 4.15 to 6.30 for all the students who are enrolled for that. Uh, for the regular Indian portfolios, these can be reviewed and uh, uh, get the feedback during the round two sessions. You all know the round two sessions when they're happening, right? Sunday, 11 o'clock to two o'clock, okay? Uh, the same timing across uh, all the centers, uh, whether it is online or offline, all right? Okay, so that's about the portfolio. Uh, let me just take a minute here to see if there are any questions that are coming in. But we have a separate uh, time allocated for the questions such that you can actually ask your questions and I can answer them. Okay. Um, all right, there are three questions. Let me just check.
Okay, Samyukta is asking, do all portfolios need to be an online, uh, online web or file? Can we make an offline portfolio? Okay, so uh, this is by Samyukta. Uh, Samyukta, you can make an offline uh, portfolio, absolutely fine. You compile, you paper, cut them, paste them, do all of that. But at the end, you take a nice picture of that and digitize it. Digitize, um, the meaning of digitization is basically you take a picture of that and add it in a A3 size canvas sheet. The reason is, uh, especially with the offline portfolios, you will not be able to create multiple copies of the portfolio. Right? You will be doing only one copy. So, God forbid, it happened to me. Okay, So, I had my physical portfolio and uh, uh, unfortunately, uh, the place where I was staying and where I was storing my work, uh, my place got flooded. And with the flood, gone all my work. With, along with my computer, because that time I was, uh, I didn't have a table, so we were having computers on the floor. So it got flooded, my computer gone, my work gone, everything got wiped out. Okay, so that's the reason. So that's the reason I'm asking you, if you're doing uh, offline work, digitize it and take two copies of the digital work as well. All right, so, <clears throat> Uh, Raul is asking, uh, do we need a hard copy of a portfolio if we soft copy enough? So, Raul, if you're doing a soft copy, please take a hard copy as well because when you're, see, the pandemic is over, right? I mean, pretty much pandemic effect is not there and everything is going offline as well. And let us say uh, you are invited for a physical interview. You cannot take your portfolio on your phone and show your portfolio on your phone. Okay, That's not a professional way of uh, representing your work. So you print out okay, two copies, give these two books to them and let them review it. Okay, fine. So Devi Nair is asking, what if our works are really big? For example, I have a work that uh, I would like to put in my portfolio and it is 5.4 uh, foot canvas matrix. So I address that, you just take a nice picture of it, okay? Uh, and add it to your portfolio. When, especially these paintings, um, when you're adding to the portfolio, take a picture along with the context. Why? Because if you're just showing the painting, they cannot understand the scale of the painting. Maybe it is uh, just an A4 size sheet, or maybe it is like five foot high, as you're saying, or maybe it is a small miniature painting, maybe two centimeters by two centimeters, who knows, right? But when you show it in a context, context in the sense of the environment, like you have this huge painting, you would probably have kept it on a wall in a room. So, take a picture of the entire room where you can actually see the painting as well, such that the context is shown and the scale is shown. All right, okay. Um, Drishti, so can we make a website portfolio as well as, as well and show them a link physically? Okay, so if you are good at making websites and etc., you show it, you create a website, but as I'm telling you, the technology fails when, when we actually needed it to work. So my advice is even if you make a website, document that website on A3 size and take a picture. Okay, I hope it's making sense for you guys. All right. A physical portfolio is very much important. So Shashank is saying, uh, are still life studies considered original work or inspired work? Okay, still life done with an object in front of you is called as original work. But still life that you are doing, referencing to a picture, then it's like a replication work. Okay, you cannot photograph a still life and then copy from the photograph, then it doesn't make sense, isn't it? All right. Okay, so. Uh, Nandana, how many distinct works should be in the portfolio? 
every work has to be distinct <laughs> right every work that you do will be distinct actually isn't it okay so i mean uh, i think what you're trying to ask is okay let's say you're including one uh, portrait one landscape one human figure action or character design one craft work so i think if you're looking that way so see it's not that you create something that you're not good at you don't have to do that okay so whatever skills that you have use that skills and create a variety of work that's all okay uh, because because a variety of work is required you don't have to basically create a portrait if you're not good at making portraits understood okay so krishna sir is it cheating or not okay if the work we have painted is copied from pinterest or the internet so so that is what i was telling you if the work is not original and if you are basically replicating the work mention it is a replication work no problem you mention it as a replication work but don't don't replicate and show it to them and say hey this is my original work i create this is my idea absolutely no okay absolutely no see go to understand the designers and the professors who will be reviewing your work have got at least 10 years of experience all right and they would know inside out of what is happening in the design world or what is a creative work that is happening in the world so you cannot cheat them okay but let us say let us say you cheated them and you got admission and you go into the school and you would be having a high expectation i mean they will be having a high expectation of you because you have shown some fantastic portfolio now after joining the school can you manage that that high level of creativity so there is no point cheating anybody so keep it open be honest be humble and uh, whatever capacity you have you show that okay uh nivedita can temple sketching the carvings and the main scenery be included in the portfolio yes yes nivedita you can include that okay and it requires high skill to basically shows that that kind of a work okay you can shraddha the work we are to the portfolio and uh, uh, do they require an explanation uh, it makes sense if you can add a small description of your work so at this point let me um, show you one example portfolio of uh, one of the past 17 and uh, she has actually joined what admission in iit guwahati and she has also completed her uh, program so we don't show any of the latest works of the students because that's not uh, correct so we are only showing works of the past students who have done with us and joined the design school and finished and then in the profession okay so let us uh, quickly have a look at this work and what i wanted to show is uh, okay a little bit of index okay of the uh, what all works that you have included and a me board so this is a interesting me board of purnima subramanyam in fact this is how she actually kind of looks okay and uh, just see uh, the kind of information that she is adding like timeline education interest skills work experience getting touch this is a me board okay and when it comes to the works so you can segregate them like okay fine art so various categories fine art illustrations branding and campaign design video production product design testimonies okay so these are the various categories and um, let us say fine art work okay so why i wanted to show this portfolio is because okay she has done some beautiful work and she has given a title and she has also given a description of what she tried to do in that so this is the description that uh, that is required if you can add something like that that will be beautiful okay that will be more meaningful as well all right so again illustrations digital illustrations and uh, uh, what software she has used and how she has created and all that information All right. Okay. Fine. Now let us go back to our presentation. Uh, sorry, I 
if you don't mind, can you show the product design part? My question was specific to the product design part. What she done in the product design? Uh, I don't think part she of the has portfolio. anything for the product design. She was looking at the visual communication. But, but can you give some ideas as to what exactly? Because it's a, you know. I sure, mean, sure, 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 sure. And yeah. I'll share uh, what work. Okay, again, uh, this is uh, done by a student who got into um, a design school abroad. Okay, let me just uh, get her work. Um, Okay, so uh, in fact, uh, uh, the video link that we have shared, it has many examples for that. Okay, uh, I'm not able to find the one. No, I'm not able to find that. So uh, what I will suggest is instead of wasting our time here. So please go through the video link. Uh, it is called Indian and Abroad Portfolio. I have shown a lot of examples of various uh, design disciplines. That will help you understand. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Yeah. Sir, I joined a little bit late. Where is the link? Uh, you can watch the live YouTube video. Okay. Okay. Thanks. Uh, Shraddha. Okay. That is answered. Uh, Tavishi. Is it necessary for it to be A3 size? I checked portfolio templates on Canva and finished making it according to the template 16 is to 9 yeah that ratio should i redo it okay so the 16 is to 9 ratio is for the screen for viewing on a screen okay uh, but what happens is when you are actually printing 16 is to 9 of course you can print it and see how it will be okay but um, why a3 is because a3 is a standard size and uh, you will be utilizing the entire size when you're printing if you're doing 16 is to 9, certain area will be chopped off. So you're wasting out that paper, the, the real estate space. So that's the reason I was suggesting A3 size. Okay. <clears throat> Tejas, sir, if the work isn't perfect as such, do I still put it in my portfolio? Guys, if the work is not perfect, make it perfect. Take time, invest time, redo it, and present the best work. Okay, it's only 15 pieces or minimum 15 pieces. If you want, we can add more, but it has to be 15 slides. Okay. Uh, okay, so a dude is asking, <laughs> his name is Dude. Okay, are hardcover portfolios preferred over digital one? Follow, if yes, how do we go about making one? I have addressed, I think you are joined late. You can watch the uh, live YouTube live. You can just go back and understand what, how, how I asked you to do it. Nivedita, is it okay to share a design idea you planned but didn't work out the way you envisioned? Yes, you can show. So what they're looking at, especially in terms of the design, is that they're looking at the process that you have undergone. So they're looking at the design process, thought process. Okay, so it doesn't matter if uh, if it has been failed and it is not to the level of your expectation, you can still show it, all right? Okay, so with that, let us uh, move forward for the next, next part, which is this statement of purpose, okay? So, um, SOP in a college admission uh, context is statement of purpose. SOP in a professional uh, context is standard operating procedure. Okay, but our SOP is different. Now our SOP, what is it? It is a 150 or 2000 worded document. Okay, so basically it is a written document which talks about why the school should select you. Okay, because the school is getting thousands of applications. So what makes you different and why they have to look at you and select you? That is the purpose of this 
SOP, statement of purpose. Now, certain schools def, uh, decide or define how long the uh, SOP has to be. Okay. In fact, uh, SOP is something NID has recently started, like two years back. Okay. So when you are filling the application, they will say, why do you want to join NID? Please describe in 150 words or something like that. Three questions, two questions, etc. Okay. So, and some schools will define, okay, 750 words. So generally not more than thousand words. Okay. So when you're creating this uh, statement of purpose, have a short version and a long version. So first work on the longer version, ensure it is thousand worded, and then you can crop it to make it a shorter version. And of course you have tools like uh, my, uh, Google, Google document where it shows you, there's a tool, when you select it, it shows the number of words that are listed uh, or that you have written in the document. So you can use that tool to exactly find out how many words, whatever compilation that you have done for statement of purpose. Okay. Now, how to get started? So the point is you are trying to explain to the school why you are unique and why they need to select you. Okay. Now for that, you need to basically do a lot of uh, background work. So basically you need to uh, contemplate on your experiences, past experiences that have uh, propelled you to make this choice of choosing design or architecture or fashion career as a career. Okay. And what is your vision? Why you want to become an architect or a designer or a fashion designer? What is the purpose and what are your interests? Okay. So the best way to do this contemplation is through mind mapping. You all know mind mapping, right? Mind mapping is uh, something very similar or simple, uh, something similar to this. So you draw yourself and then you take a different aspect of you and then you further question and write down various aspects of who you are. All right. And uh, this mind mapping is also helpful for understanding or preparing for your interview. So if you're not done the mind mapping of your own thoughts yourself, please do that. All right. And uh, um, And when you're creating this mind map, one thing what you have to keep in your mind is every person is unique and every person is of value. Okay. So, so you may immediately, you may not find that, okay, how am I different? I'm not unique and etc. But if you do the soul searching, if you contemplate, you will find your unique strengths, your unique experiences, your unique vision. So that becomes a basis of writing a statement of purpose. All right. So there are three things that you add in your statement of purpose. One is you talk about your current situation. Okay, what are you studying? Where are you living? What kind of work you are doing? What kind of creative work that you are doing? What experiences you had, etc. Second is your past experiences. Okay. There could be some kind of an incident in your past that has basically made you think and create something that would have kind of given you an indication that, oh, this is what I want to do in the future. Okay, some impressions, some past impressions, some special thing that would have happened in the past. So you talk about that past and then you connect it to the future, saying that, okay, this is my future vision, this is what I want to do, and this is the right path and yours is the right school. So. That is the reason I'm applying to your school and please select me. Okay. Now here you also have to understand about the school that you're applying for. Okay. You, you need to do a deep study of the school that you're going to are applying for. You can't say, okay, because uh, everybody is applying for NID. I am also applying for NID. <laughs> that cannot be a reason for applying or writing in SOP and them selecting you. You need to find some key things that you would strongly uh, connect with your past, with your present and with your future. And then you would say, this is the reason I'm the best student to be considered for your institution. Okay. Very important thing is you have to 
uh, whenever you're talking about passion, you need to quantify it. Okay. Uh, passion without quantifying is just infatuation. You are just daydreaming. Okay. I'll give you an example. For example, let us say I meet so many people, so many students, they come and they say that, okay, sir, I want to become an architect. Oh, nice. Okay. Why you want to become an architect? Uh, sir, because uh, uh, um, sir, my dad's friend is an architect, so I also want to become an architect. Okay. Okay. Um, have you studied anything about architecture? Um, oh, no, sir, I have not studied anything about architecture. Do you follow any famous architects? No, sir, I don't follow any famous architects. Okay. Have you have you attempted to design something, something you need, some building or some space? No, sir. Okay, no. This is called infatuation. It's just daydreaming. Okay. So you think that, okay, I'm passionate about something, but on the ground reality is you have not done anything. Okay. So how would you quantify your passion? Let us say there was a competition, you attended it and you got first prize in it or you got selected in finalists or uh, there was a requirement for an NGO, you have gone, you volunteered, you created this particular logo or some kind of a pamphlets to them because of which they're able to distribute and they can raise funds. That is quantifying passion. I hope you understood the difference. Okay. Now, how to present? Now, this it will be a purely a type document. It's, it's a worded document. Okay. And if you are really good at handwriting, you can nicely handwrite the entire thing, thousand words. Okay. And also you can uh, make it a little creative. I'll show you an example of how you can make it creative. But the tone of your SOP statement of purpose has to be formal with perfect grammar. Okay. So if you are good at typography, lettering, and etc., you can actually handwrite the entire thing. I can you can scan it and that becomes a digital copy and that you can share it with them. And of course, you can have some little interesting illustrations and etc. So the entire thing becomes more lively, and then they kind of you you kind of tell the person that okay, you are a creative type. Okay, so that is what you can do. Provided you're good at typography and your handwriting is good. Okay, so how DIG can help you? So as with the portfolio, you can also get your statement of purpose reviewed by DQ faculty during the round two sessions. And especially when you're doing this uh, statement of purpose, uh, please be prepared to revise and rewrite multiple times because the more amount of effort time you invest, the more refined the SOP would become. Okay. All right. So uh, let me just check any questions about the statement of purpose. Mm. So anything specific about statement of purpose? There are no specific questions about statement of purpose. So the other questions I will address at the end. Okay, because we have only 18 minutes and I also have to cover the interview aspect. Okay, fine. But please keep writing your questions. If you get time, we'll uh, address uh, before six o'clock. All of these. Now, the next is interview. So, what is this interview? So, NID and IIT will not have interview. Of course, during the pandemic time, there was an interview process. But once the pandemic subsided, there was only studio test. There was no personal interaction with the professors. But however, all the private schools will have an interview. Okay. Now what happens in the interview? So uh, there could be one person or a panel of people, professionals who are sitting on the other side and they'll be trying to understand who you are, what are your interests, what is your aptitude, attitude, and um, are you the desirable candidate to be selected to be in their prestigious school? Okay, so the, the objective of the interview is to either select or reject. Okay, now what uh, sales, what makes you sail through the interview process is your great attitude and deep knowledge. Okay, so I'll give you an example of deep knowledge. Okay, uh, let us say you're sitting in an interview room and then they say, okay, oh, you have applied for UI UX. Uh, that's interesting. 
Uh, do you know what the UI and UX stands for? Um, somebody answers the question. Okay, somebody who says, um, sir, I think it is um, UI. UI means, um, I think some icons sir, and interaction, I think, um, so I have no idea, sir. Okay, then you're gone, right? You got to understand the technical terms that are generally used in the industry. Okay, in fact, that is the reason I insist all the students to join the design nuance edu series that we do every Sunday, right? Because we take up certain term of our discipline and then we dig deeper into it and the professors will explain you more about the term, okay? Um, or another example, um, okay, so you want to become product designer. Yes, sir, I want to become product designer, an iconic product designer. Okay, iconic product designer. Can you name few iconic product designers? Um, sir, uh, iconic designers. Um, okay, Jonathan Ive. Jonathan Ive. Ah, okay, okay, fine. Uh, do you know who is Jonathan Ive? Where does he work? Um, sir, he used to work for Apple. Fantastic, very good. Uh, can you please tell what is his recent work? Jonathan Ive's recent work. Can anybody tell in the chat window? Can you, can anybody tell about the recent work of Jonathan Ive? Okay. He has started his own studio. Okay. Now he is no longer working with Apple. He started his own studio. Okay. And his first work, let me see, somebody has answered it seems. Yes. I mean, love form is his, uh, uh, his uh, uh, studio. And he had created a signage or a logo or a symbol for a British company. And it looks amazing, different out of the, the current trend. Okay. So if you don't know that, and if they're asking and you don't know that, then they know that, okay, this guy is only like <laughs> only superficial guy. He does not have deep uh, knowledge. So please invest your time in knowing things well. What are you talking? You need to know well. Okay, fine. So the next thing is how do I get started? Where do I start? So again, start with the mind map, the process that you are starting for SOP. Go into your strengths and weaknesses, understand your strengths and weaknesses, list down your hobbies and go deeper. Let us say reading is your hobby. Then you got to know, okay, the authors, recent books or famous books, famous quotes, okay? How does the cover page of those novels or uh, books look like? Who designed them? Okay, so you got to go into the depth and go deeper into your roots, okay? Uh, let us say, um, let us say that, okay, they may ask a question, okay, where is your native? Okay, you're living in Bangalore, but where were you born? And then you say that, okay, I, I was born in uh, Nellur, for example. Okay. Oh, Nellur. Oh, Nellur is famous for what? Uh, sir, Nellur, uh, sir, I was born there, but I never been there. <laughs> then gone. <laughs> right? You got to understand your roots. You got to dip, dig deeper into your roots. Okay. So if you're not done that exercise, please do it and be prepared. And Create ready-made answers. So there will be very uh, common, uh, commonly asked questions. Okay, tell me something about yourself. Okay, um, what are your interests? What are your hobbies? What do you want to do? Where do you see yourself five years from now, 10 years from now, 50 years from now? Okay, so these are uh, very commonly asked questions. So you need to be prepared well with your ready-made answers. So for that, again, invest in knowing yourself well. Okay, fine. And what to include? Okay, you may ask this question. Okay, sir, interview is something that they ask questions and I give the answers. So what do you mean by what to include? Now, this is the key. Even though it is called interview, even though there are panels sitting in front of you, you are the person who will be driving the interview. The kind of questions they would ask depends on the kind of responses you are giving. Okay. So you only talk about the positive aspects of you. You will never get into the negative aspects. 
Okay, because unless you tell, they will not know. Okay, I'll give you an example here. So an example, tell me about yourself. Response one, uh, I am 18 year old Bangalorean, love to explore food and visiting museums. Okay, response number two, I'm 18, old, uh, 18 year old Bangalorean. I don't like to mingle with people, I speak less. Can you understand the consequences or the next questions, follow-up questions that will follow with this answer? Okay. For the response one, they will ask, oh, you explore food. That's interesting. What kind of food? Uh, tell me about a food item that you have tasted for the first time in your entire life. How is it made? Where is it, uh, where is it available? What kind of tools they use to create that food? How does it taste? Okay, the direction will go into understanding food, his, his favorite food and etc. Et All visiting museums. Oh, which museum did you visit? Now, what is the famous painting of famous work there? Do you know about this museum, this fact? Are there any other things that you would like to share? Okay, that is a response one. Response two. Oh, is it? Why? Why you don't like to mingle with people? Oh, so you're shy of talking to them? Oh, you are an introvert. Oh, but you know that in design, you have to talk to a lot of people. Then how can you cope up with this design profession? And you also speak less. You should keep talking more. <laughs> right? So the entire interview process is driven by you. What kind of answers you are giving to the um, to the panel okay so very important point okay so you only talk about the positive aspects and you only talk about those things you are comfortable or you have deeper knowledge into okay fine then uh, how to present how to present yourself the entire thing has to be a formal thing so you go to the interview with a formal attire and you also use the positive body language like you don't sit casually in the chair, and then you kind of uh, uh, shake your hand or maybe shake your leg and then say, um, yes, bro, no, bro. <laughs> I see that kind of thing happening nowadays in respect to of whom the students are speaking to. Okay, so respect the hierarchy, respect them. Okay, have a formal uh, position of yourself and uh, you be your good self. Okay, you be your formal self, being yourself means being your formal self, not the informal self and carry a great attitude. Now, this is very important, um, especially in the design profession, attitude matters a lot. The success or failure of a designer is because of the attitude that they carry. Now, the attitude has to be a positive attitude where you are eager to learn. And if you don't know something, you submit saying that, okay, I don't know about this. I would like to further study about it. Okay, great attitude and humility is the key to success. Okay, so this is about how to present and how DQ can help you. So in fact, we'll be organizing the mock interviews during the round two sessions and these happen uh, after January. So right now the focus is on the entrance exam preparation and et cetera, et cetera. So we'll be having these mock interviews after January. But before that, we would want you to practice answering some common questions with your family and friends. Okay. Uh, you may feel that, okay, why should I practice? I know my answers. But trust me, when, you, when somebody asks you a question and for you to answer, uh, you get to familiar. You need to become familiar uh, in undergoing that particular process. Okay. So meanwhile, you can... Uh, uh, you can practice with your family. Now you may ask yourself what kind of questions and etc. Now that has been covered in another video. That video is available. In fact, the video has been shared in the WhatsApp messages for all of you. And the video description, uh, the videos are in the description block of the YouTube live that is happening now. Okay. So please access that and go through those three videos that we have shared. Uh, it will be of great value to you. So any questions? So let me just go through the uh, sheet and see if there are any further questions. And we have uh, six minutes. Let me try to 
answer as many as possible within the six minutes. If there are any repeated questions, I would not answer them. Uh, okay. So question number fifteen. Akshaya is asking. I have a lot of photographs that I have taken, and even after shortlisting the best of them, I remain about thirty or forty pictures. So roughly, how many photographs do I put? 30, 40 photographs after shortlisting all of them. Okay, you definitely need help, all right? You basically add those photographs which are very, very unique. So see guys, when you are talking about photography, photography, there are two kinds of photographs that you would get, okay? One is you take your mobile phone and then you randomly click pictures and then accidentally you get one picture, all right? And then uh, it has come out nice, okay? So that is accidental photography. The second type of photography is you kind of purposefully create them. Okay, you learn the techniques, you implement the techniques, and then you probably in fact position certain things in a way that you can capture a beautiful picture. Okay, so that also happens. So what is interesting and of value is the second type where you have orchestrated the entire thing to capture a beautiful picture. Now, those are the kind of photographs that are of value and useful. Now, when you are presenting that kind of a, a photograph, what you do, you also write in the small description, the ISO that you used, the shutter speed that you used, and other, if you have done any post-processing of the photograph, what uh, software you have used, etc. Et you can also show the before photograph and the after post process the photograph and all of that. Okay, so uh, if you look from that perspective, your 30 to 40 pictures will come down to probably five or six. All right. Okay. Uh, Dia is asking when is the second round of applications open for ISDI? I think if Dion is there in this call, Dion can answer that. I can answer that, but. Uh... I think the objective is to focus on the first round. The second round, uh, we've done the webinar in that. She mentioned that the second round is somewhere around April or after, if I remember right. But just check, go back on our YouTube web webinar and check that, watch the webinar done with ISTI. Okay, cool. So Tavishi is asking, uh, is it advisable to include work from the design exploration program for our uh, portfolio as well? Yes, Tavishi, you can include your design exploration program. So pick uh, one or two projects that are that have come up very nice that you're very satisfied with and you present. And if there are uh, certain things you may have to probably recreate, please recreate it such that the work will be impactful, okay? Uh, Sanya is asking, sir, is there specific artwork that the colleges expect based on your specialization? Artwork based on specialization? No. Artwork is of morally generic nature where you're trying to show your skill, the observation abilities and etc. Okay. Um, the design specific works would be like problem solving or that you have created some kind of a, maybe a product or a model or maybe like a logo or brochures or something like that, okay? Um, again, Sanya is asking, okay, that is Sanya. All right, fine. Uh, Latika, sir, you mentioned putting only our best works in the portfolio for Indian colleges. I have made some basic graphic designs for school events. I was thinking they show variety and uh, yes, yes, you can add your uh, uh, project works like that as well. Okay, so please go ahead and add them. Um, Meenakshi is saying, would photography be part of a portfolio? I think I had uh, just spoken about the photography. You can add photography as part of the portfolio as well. Nidhi. If animation is a strength of mind, could I put a variety of animation works, stop motion, 2D, 3D? Yes, yes, of course, you can do that. And not add sketches and other work. Uh, I do not have other artwork to add. So you would have created some artwork for animation. So is it all done on software or have you actually drawn and done some kind of a thing? So it depends on, I need to 
check what kind of animation that you have with the, uh, but you can add all the animation. Yes, because the animation is your interest. Okay, fine. Um, Anika, <clears throat> should I prioritize work done that is better looking or work that has been done in a, in a corporate manner? For example, I designed book covers for a publishing company that were published. Go with your best works. Okay, so I understand the work is published, but I have not seen the work, so I, I cannot comment on the work. Maybe it is good, maybe it can be improved, but of course, it's definitely an accomplishment because it has been published, so you can add it. But if it is not best of your work, then you can, you don't have to prioritize it. Okay, but it is definitely worth to show that work. And the dude is back. Can I add my 3D renders from Blender uh, in my portfolio along with the ideation sketches and design? Yes, dude, you can do that. That is that will be very exciting to do. Latika, sir, is it okay to start the SOP after our entrance and boards? So yeah, you can do it after, but you can start the process now because it kind of helps you understand further and contemplate. You get that gestation period to. Uh, understand yourself and write down. Okay. Uh, you can also do later, or you can. I suggest start off now. Let's say you, you spend 15 minutes of time today, or 15 minutes of time per week till your exams are over. Okay. So, some some ideas you keep getting it. Okay. We have, I have already submitted my portfolio and SOP through ISDI. Can we update and resend it uh, after your review? We have so Dion, you may have to answer that she has already submitted. So, can she resubmit after the review? Yeah, so that uh, she'll have to connect with their single point of contact at the school. Uh, oh, okay, if she okay. reaches out to Swati, Swati will give her the person. All right, uh, we have a few more questions to go and we are crossing six. Is that fine, Dion, um, or do we have to stop? Sorry, we can extend by another maybe one or two minutes. One or two minutes, all right. So I'll take uh, the. Should the statement of purpose be specific to the schools we apply to? Certain things will be common, certain things will be specific. When you are basically saying that, okay, I want to join your school, then you have to tell why. That why part would be specific to the school. The other stuff will be generic, okay? Drishti Arora, if NID and IIT don't have either use and I believe uh, don't check portfolios as well, then do they only uh, then do they take only aptitude score? Yes, yes, yes. So you see score is a final entry thing for IITs. NID round one and round two, a combination of those two will be for the uh, ranking of the NID. So based on only those two. And round two will have studio test, which would not have portfolio. I mean, at this point of time, they have not announced, but if they announce, then probably we have to keep checking that. Drishti. Okay, Drishti, I have answered. Nivedita. How different is the portfolio presentation from the interview process? So, uh, in the interview process, the portfolios will be reviewed. Sometimes the schools will ask for submitting the portfolios upfront and then the interview happens. Okay. Um, again, Nivedita, is it okay to decorate decorate your SOP typed document with illustrations? Type the document with illustrations, don't decorate it. No. If you're handwriting, handwritten, then do it. If not, just plain text. Ajay Krishna, what advice do you give for architects? To prepare the portfolio for seed, product design, sir. All right, great, great. So I'm an architect and an industrial designer, so I can uh, talk a lot about that. Uh, so for product design, think about, uh, so think about problems that you observe and you come up, so you basically solve them, especially for UG, sorry, for PG, we have created a separate video. I would request you to go through that video because in detail we have explained what kind of projects we should be adding there. Okay. Shraddha, 
Um, should I add the picture only of the final work or also the brainstorming process of work such as report or project? Brainstorming is important. Please add the process plus the final object. And kindly watch the video that I was talking about. Anika, last question. Sir, is it okay to include more concepts and ideas rather than fine arts? Um, so yes, you can add, but then they are expecting certain level of fine art skill from you. Okay, so uh, have few, few of the fine art sketches as well. All right, so with that, uh, thank you all so much for your patient uh, listening and uh, over to you, Dion. All right, uh, just one reminder to everybody, please uh, ensure that you submit your applications for UC. Um, the deadline is coming up on the 21st of October. So before that, make sure you get all your documents from your schools and uh, submit your applications. Um, for those of you who have not subscribed to our YouTube channels, all these videos that we are doing are available on the YouTube channels. Um, please subscribe and make sure that you follow. You'll get notified and also follow us on YouTube. All right. Thanks. Thanks, Omesh, uh, for the... Uh, for the presentation and uh, any of the students here want more information you always all you can always reach out to DQ labs.